All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our June 11th meeting. Please join us in the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Supervisor Wilhelm. Here. Councilwoman Noah. Here. Councilwoman Interrello. Here. Councilman Loma. Here. Okay, we have uh, site plans today, Mr. Trotter. Good afternoon, Supervisor, member of the, of the town board. I'm Liam Trotter of the planning department, and I have two site plan matters to present to the board this afternoon, acting as the board of site plan review. The first is an application called Houndstown, 395 Middle Country Road. The subject site is located on the northwest corner of Middle Country Road and Marshant Drive in St. James. This is the former Gelmar property. The proposal is for a change of use of a 4,750 square foot tenant space from wholesale business to animal boarding to an animal boarding facility with a 10 by 20 foot outdoor dog run, parking lot modifications, and the legalization of site work. Uh, so a lot of site work was done along Marshand Drive back in 2020 without the benefit of a building permit. So right now they're legalizing uh, the bill prior work. And they're also proposing, again, in the middle tenant space between the Bullseye Beverage and the Aboff's Painting Supply will be a uh, new animal boarding facility with an outdoor dog run, which is roughly the same size as a standard parking stall. Um, the applicant has agreed to four conditions of site plan approval. Uh, the first condition is that they obtain a building permit prior to the start of construction. The second condition is that they install a tree preservation fence along the north property line. Uh, they will be doing a small parking lot expansion to the north, so there will be a tree preservation fence to protect the existing uh, wooded area. The third condition is that they uh, obtain a road opening and close permit from the highway, up uh, from the town highway department. And the last condition is that the existing vehicular cross access driveway with the property to the west shall remain and not be eliminated as depicted on the approved site plan. So on the, the plan submitted with the application, they proposed to close off the existing cross access, but we're recommending that they maintain it in order to allow cars to go between properties. And the floor plan for the proposal. Does the board have any questions on this matter? I have just one question. Yep. Is that just for boarding, or will there, will there be pet food sold? And um, I believe it's all for boarding. I don't think there was any proposed retail involved with the business. Is it just for dogs? I believe so, but I can find out if they offer other animals. Just yeah, it's called <laughs> Houndstown, so I'm assuming it is. Yeah, it's just dogs, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have they agreed to the cross access? Yes. They have? Yes. Okay. Yep. Any other questions by the board? No. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Two? Yep. The next matter is a site plan approval extension. And this involves site plan application number 12-22, Sheraton, Long Island, Spring Hill Suites. The subject site is located on Motor Parkway in Hop Hog, sharing the same site as the existing Radisson Hotel. The proposal is for a 77,238 square foot four-story hotel with 144 guest rooms. And the application was approved on April 25th, 2013. The zoning ordinance allows site plan approvals to be valid for one year and allows for extensions in one-year increments unless they obtain a valid building permit, then the extensions are no longer needed. The applicant has not yet filed a building permit, and the planning department has been granting one-year extensions since 2014, with a total of 10 extensions since then. Uh, typically, extension requests are handled administratively, uh, but since they are requesting an 11th extension, we are asking that the board grant this as a final extension. Uh, in the past 10 years, they have there have been modifications to the zoning ordinance, building code, and design guidelines. And we're hoping that this being a final extension will prompt the applicant to obtain building permits and develop the project. Otherwise, they have the option of reapplying to the Board of Site Plan Review. Uh, and if granted as a final extension, it will validate the site plan approval until April 25th, 2025. Okay, a question by the Board. I'm in agreement with the lay. This will be the last extension. The final extension? Okay, thank right. you. I don't think, does anybody on the board object to that? No. They've been uh, getting enough extensions for now. Ten years. Right? Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Trotter. You. We will be voting on those at the end of the board meeting. Thank you. Uh, reconvene as Board of Water Commissioners. The minutes of May 23rd, 
and an amendment to agreement with H2M Architects and Engineers dated April 11th, 2022 for planning, rehabilitation, expansion of operation and maintenance of facilities at the Smithtown and St. James Water District and to modify the rate schedule and extend said agreement for a one-year term. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Interrello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wehrheim? Yes. On appointments by the Supervisor, Barbara Coniglio and Alexis Heffernan to the Youth Advisory Board from June 12th through December 31st, 2025. Under correspondence, the Building Department report for June 2024 and authorize the Town Clerk to advertise for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, July 16th at 2 p.m. to consider Proposed Local Law 1324, adopting Chapter 324, entitled Moratorium on Battery Energy Storage Systems. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Zarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wehrheim? Yes. On the consent agenda, the controller number 1 to 11 and resolutions 1 to 6, plus the minutes of May 23rd. Councilman Lohman. Hold on, excuse Sorry. me. Um, is there anyone on the town council wish to remove any resolutions from the consent agenda? No. 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 Okay, Mr. Clerk. Councilman Lohman. Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello. Yes. Councilwoman Nowak. Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm. Yes. The town board to issue a secret negative to declaration determination in the matter of the application for site plan approval for Houndstown or Smithtown, and in the matter of the town board's own motion to amend Chapter 322 of the code entitled zoning as it relates to parking garages for the reasons stated in a memorandum from the environmental protection director. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nizarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wehrheim? Yes. Authorize the town clerk to advertise for bid 2450 furnish and install a truck scale at the highway yard and 2449 traffic signal mass storms with foundations. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nizarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wehrheim? Yes. Award the following bids and authorize the purchase of the associated goods and services. Bid 2433, outboard motors to Great Bay Marine. 2436, annual requirement contracts for traffic signal maintenance and installation to Hink Electrical, New England Traffic Solutions and Traffic Systems Incorporated. 2438, electrical maintenance and repair to Greg Smith Electrical and 2437 plow blades and cutting edges to Chem Mung Supply, Volk Manufacturing, Winter Company, and DiGiano Truck and Utility Equipment. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Adoption of amendments to Chapter 112 entitled Building Construction Regarding Building Permits. The next three resolutions are regarding Chapter 322, which is a, a change to the zoning code. The first is how it relates to sheds, the second is relating to the Board of Appeals, and the last is relating to parking garages. The Town Board to submit an application for Municipal Waste Reduction and Recycling Project grant funding for the Municipal Service Facility Equipment. Addition of PMG Strategic Marketing and Media Services to the Town's 2024 pre-qualified list of professional service consultants, and establishment of the standard workday for Paul D'Amato, Board of Zoning Appeals Member, an amendment to the 2024 Highway Road Program to add Rutherford Street and Caldwell Avenue in St. James, designation of Janice Maria Mato as the ADA coordinator, ratification of the supervisor's execution of a side letter of agreement with the Smithtown Administrators Guild regarding the ADA coordinator position, and the last is the town board to accept a proposal from H2M architects and engineers related to professional services for so local solid waste management plan. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Zarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wehrheim? Yes. Authorize the supervisor to execute the following resolutions on a form approved by the town attorney. Order on consent between the town and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation regarding given park on Jericho Turnpike. Agreement with Civic Plus for website accessibility for a period of one year in an amount not to exceed 12400 Agreement with Carisoft Technology for cybersecurity advisory services. <coughs> An agreement with the Center Reach Fire District to utilize the Edward Mancusco Fire Training Center for a one-year term. An agreement with Jean Scout Rudd, registered nurse, to provide services to the Smithtown Camp 
Smile Day Camp Program from July 1st through August 9th, 2024. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nizzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Approved settlement per the recommendation of the town attorney with Joseph Badalato for $1,000. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nizzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Personnel items 1 to 19 as described on the agenda. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nizzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. We have one read on? Yes, the read on is regarding uh, a. It's a termination of an employee pursuant to a last chance agreement dated April 12th, and it will be effective June 11th, 2024. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhite? Yes. Reconvene his Board of Site Plan Review for site plans. The minutes approval of May 23rd and conditionally approved the site plan for Hounds Town, Smithtown for a change of use for 4,750 square foot tenant space from wholesale business to animal boarding facility and the extension of the site plan approval from April 25th, 2013 for Sheridan Spring Hill Suites. Both applications were described by our planning department at the beginning of the meeting. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. That concludes resolutions for this afternoon. We have uh, speakers, deputy yeah. clerk. So before we start, public participation is subject to the rules of the quorum, which you have on your speaker cards as per town code section 76.7. .7. The public portion is for town related matters only. Any unsubstantiated, unverified, or material false information will be interrupted. The three minute rule will be strictly enforced when you hear the tone you have one minute to complete your statements. Thank you. Peter Rennick. Uh, please. <laughs> I, I didn't know there's a time limit, so I will speak quickly. Uh, my wife, Susan, and I are here. First time at one of your meetings. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we've been residents for 34 years. We live at 19 Parkwoods Lane. Uh, First, I'd like to thank the board for the improvements they did at Flynn Park with the lighting. Incredible. Used to light up the whole neighborhood, the sky, the space station could see it. Uh, now, I drive by the park, the only thing I see is the scoreboards. Incredible. But my subject I'd like to talk about is lighting pollution. Uh, about the same time you redid uh, Flynn Park, one day we came home and our backyard was an airport. Lights everywhere. Uh, you have a town code that says clearly all lights used to illuminate the pool or pool area shall be shielded to prevent shining from the property of any adjacent property owner. Well, our backdoor neighbor clear cut their backyard, put in a pool, then proceeded to put lights above a six foot high privacy fence, seven to eight feet tall, uh, they're across the entire property line. They offer no buffer zone at all, not a leaf, nothing, just right onto our yard. They're bright, they're unshielded, there are hundreds of them. They shine into every window in our house, our family room, our dining room, our kitchen, our bedrooms. Uh, I don't let her talk because <laughs> she'd have a few choice words. Uh, our patio, uh, you can be, they can be seen from in front of our yard, from across the street. Neighbors across the street have asked, but well, um, well, I'm running out of time. The, we, yeah, tried, we try to work with the town for three years now, and basically we're told there's no glare. There's no, there is no, oops, sorry, no shining into our yard. Is this that, is what we look at. I don't understand how they post lights. They are string lights hung eight feet high oh, over so a six trees. foot fence. So the only thing we've asked for ever is them to be lowered below the fence line. But 
this hasn't been ever been done. I, the public safety has been great. Building department has been great. Well, we were just told the other day, uh, string lights don't count as glare. I'm sorry. This is glare. Okay. What I would ask you to do is, after the board meeting, if you can stay, um, have a conversation with our director of public safety, give him all the information, we will then um, convene with the building department and we'll get to the bottom of it one way or the other. Thank you. You're welcome. Linda Abernauer. Oh, Don't use her time yet. Uh, no, you. I mean, if you wanted to speak to, yeah, he, that, that's the chief. Thank you, director, and, and we'll be in touch with you, sir. Appreciate it. Can I start? Uh, good afternoon, uh, town council. My name is Linda Obernauer. I am a resident of Smithtown, and I'm an, a member of the U United Community Action Network. And unfortunately, I'm here in front of you again. Um, about um, a very similar incident that happened a couple of months ago um, regarding uh, signs posted on our um, telephone poles. On May 15th at 1 o'clock, this sign, and I don't have a picture of the sign, but I have a picture, I have a picture of the sign, but not the sign itself because I wasn't privy to it. This was discovered at the library, Smithtown Library, on the same pole that the previous sign was discovered. Um, and you can, read, you can kind of read it, I can pass around if you want to see it. It says there's no such thing as a trans child, but there are vulnerable children. Thank you. And, it's, and you can't really read it, but it then says something about pedophiles. Save the children. This is the same type of sign. It is the same format of the same sign, so we know it has to be the same person that is doing this. Um, now, that when some people say this is a political sign, we know that that's partially true. However, we also know that political messages are encompassed in promoting hurt and harm to the most vulnerable. Shortly thereafter, um, there was an incident on Lake Avenue where two persons uh, attempted to post a sign similarly looking like this, meaning that it was the same sign that we have members at large that go and canvas the Smithtown area. Um, so one of our members in the car pulled over in their car and yelled at the people that, the people that were trying to put up this sign and said that this is illegal, you cannot be posting any type of signs on these poles. They went to pull over to go into the parking lot and come out of the car, and the people just, they just took off with the sign. We don't know what the sign said, but it was the same format, so we're just assuming that it was the same type of sign. Um, now this is the fourth incident that we know of, and we're just a very small group of people, um, so we know that there has to be many others. Um, so w it's just a concern that the town board comes to a consensus and makes some, some kind of statement that this is absolutely intolerable for this neighborhood because, I mean, there, this is, I mean, many of us work with children and these children that have seen some of these signs, it's hurtful to them if they're dealing with this type of situation, you know, in their families. Um, so, and we also want to say that um, it might be that it sounds like we're always talking about the same incident, but also you know, anything that happens against any community, anti-Semitism, immigrant, or anti-homeless, you know, should be condemned as well. Um, so anyway, I would just like to thank you all for the time and just want to bring this to your attention. Thank do you. Do you want to hold on to that picture, or would you mind giving it to the clerk, or do we you can, want to keep it? Uh, I think we have to, another one, so I can give it to you. You have another one? We do, yes. Okay, if you would leave that with the clerk um, so we can... Uh, Work with our public safety department. Okay. See if we can come up with something. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keith McCartney. <coughs> Good afternoon. Keith McCartney, 273 Bread and Cheese Hollow Road in Fort Salonga. I am president of the Fort Salonga Association, which is a civic group uh, supporting 2,500 homes in Fort Salonga. As I stand here today, I try to understand the motivation Supervisor Wareheim and this board has for wanting to champion a project that will be so extremely detrimental to its citizens, namely the town line rail yard. I try to understand why this board refused to look at the most viable alternative there is 
to the proposed rail yard the abandoned Pilgrim State property. I continually try to understand how the supervisor was, unable to, was able to send a letter of support to the Surface Transportation Board prior to Mr. Carlson filing the application with said board without any input from the community, especially those who would be directly impacted. And I wonder how this board rubber stamped the supervisor's approval letter to the SDB well over a year after being sent. In closing, I continue to ask myself these same questions. How? How on earth we've even gotten to this point? Why? The old adage, why in my backyard when there is a much better solution at hand? And who? Who in their right mind would even consider a project of this type in the backyard of families? Families with young children? Families who need quiet to sleep at night so they can function properly during their school and work days? And finally, I I'm still perplexed why you have these meetings at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when people are at work. Okay? People cannot continually take off from work to be here. When you had the meetings at 7 o'clock, that worked. It doesn't work now. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Messino. Hi, how are you? Thank you for your time. My name is Mike Messino. I live at 5 Glen Road. I am literally 150 feet from this proposed site. I live right in my backyard. I have two young children. They are 8 years old and 10 years old. Um, the thought of the light pollution, the noise pollution, <coughs> diesel engines running, the thought of the pollution, that the, the, the toxic fumes that are going to be coming out of this thing 24-7, the, 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 the thought of a derailment that could destroy my property, the thought of any spills, if there's all the hazardous material that's coming and going from this place, any spill is gonna travel 150 feet. 150 feet lands on my property. Um, we were all blindsided by this about a year or two ago. Nobody knew anything about it. Um, we seem to be the last to know about anything and I try to stay as informed as I can. I am trying to understand how this is supported um, my neighborhood has 40-something kids in it. Um, you know, where I'm 150 feet away, some of them are 300 feet away, whatever it might be. It's a neighborhood full of kids. Um, and I am just strongly in opposition of this. I'm not, I, I can't quite understand where the benefit is at all, um, as opposed to the, to, to the cost of what is this doing to the community. Um, there are better solutions. Um, you know, we've been fed a whole bunch of nonsense, like, you know, oh, it's going to reduce traffic. Okay, what about all the trucks that are coming with all the hazardous materials? They're coming in with hazardous materials, they're leaving with hazardous materials. There's going to be truckload after truckload after truckload of hazardous materials going right up to the site. How is that reducing traffic? Um, you know, everything we've been told, just, it just doesn't make logical sense. Um, so I'm not quite sure why the board is in support of this, but I'm just here to voice my opposition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Heather Gordon. Good afternoon. I'm here today um, as a parent. These are my two beautiful children whose lives will be affected if this freight yard is built. I'm also here as the president of the Comac Council of PTA, and I'd like to read you the letter that we have drafted. All of our units have unanimously come together to oppose the freight yard. So Townline Association Executive Board, the Comac PTA Council is strongly opposed to the proposed Carlson Corp Town Line Rail Terminal because of the adverse effects it will have on the families within the Comac School District and community. The proposed freight terminal will consist of five tracks totaling 9,400 feet, two 100,000 square foot buildings, and a 161 freight car capacity totaling 10,456 feet of train. 
While we understand the importance of freight trains and the critical role they play in the transport of goods and other materials, we cannot support such a proposal so close to children and families within our community. This freight yard poses significant health and safety challenges that can comprise the health of Comac residents. A 2018 study by the Loma, U Loma Linda University of Public Health found that children living less than 10 miles from a freight yard were at a significantly greater risk for asthma-related emergency room visits. These are alarming statistics, especially in light of the fact that hundreds of families live within the vicinity of the proposed freight yard at Northport High School, Harborfields High School, Northridge Primary School, and Colmec High School are all within a 10-mile radius. Adverse effect to the environment. Most of Long Island is dependent on an underlying sole source aquifer system, which supplies 400 million gallons per day of fresh water from more than 1,500 public supply wells to over 2.8 million people in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Recharge basins are naturally or artificially constructed excavations that collect rainwater or snowmelt to replenish this sole source aquifer system. These basins not only increase groundwater levels, but also provide habitats for water birds and other wildlife, lessen flood risk, and provide valuable recreational space. The proposed Carlson Court Town Rail Terminal would sit on top of a deep recharge basin, potentially compromising the quality of our groundwater and harming the recharge water, which replenishes, replenishes drinking water reserves for humans and wildlife. Um, there is obviously the traffic issue. But finally, the potential to harm for our community is greatly exacerbated by the presence of a freight rail terminal. Like many freight companies, Carlson Corp will be required to receive and ship hazardous materials upon request based on the common carrier obligations stipulated by the Federal Surface Transportation Board. This means that hazardous materials could potentially come into our community. As of October 2023, the Federal Railroad Administration have recorded 742 train derailments in 2023 alone. The most publicized of these train derailments took place in East Palestine, Ohio, where a freight train carrying hazardous materials sent smoke and particulate matter into the air while crash runoff contaminated nearby waterways. I can leave this with you. Do you want to submit that letter in as matter yes, of record? Please. So just uh, tender that to the clerk, please. Thank you. Thank you. Laurie Mandel. Hi, how are you? My name is Lori Mandel. I live at Two Roanoke Court in Country Estates. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm writing to express my concerns along with the neighborhood of Country Estates about the current practice of patching streets in our development rather than implementing a comprehensive road paving project. As residents of Country Estates, we have observed that the patching approach is merely a temporary solution that fails to address the underlying issues of deteriorating road conditions. It's disheartening to note that despite our significant contributions through real estate taxes, our roads have not undergone a full paving in over 20 years. Furthermore, I wish to draw attention to the state of the sidewalks within our community. They are not only in dire need of repair, but they also pose extreme safety hazards. They are uneven. As pedestrians, residents, including children and the elderly, face unnecessary risks while navigating the sidewalks in our development. Given the substantial investment we make in our community through taxes, we respectively urge the highway department to consider allocating their resources towards a comprehensive maintenance project, including both road paving or resealing or sidewalk repair, similar to what had been done in country woods not so long ago. This initiative would not only enhance the safety and aesthetic appeal of our neighborhood, but also demonstrate a commitment to the well-being of its residents, which we know that you do. We believe that a well-maintained road and sidewalk infrastructure are essential for fostering a thriving community, and we hope that our concerns will be taken into consideration. I have signatures from the residents of our neighborhood, and I also have pictures of the roads and sidewalks in our neighborhood. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would you give them to the, town, to the clerk? And then they'll be, uh, we'll be in touch with the highway system. Joseph Simon. Simo Simon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joseph Simeone. I live at 3 Glen Road uh, in Kings Park. Um, <clears throat> I've lived in that neighborhood for 60 years. First and foremost, what I'd like to say is that uh, the opposition to this facility is strictly centered around the inappropriateness of the location. 
I've watched generations grow up and build beautiful lives in this neighborhood. Kings Park is one of those unique Long Island towns where children grow up here and end up staying and raising their families here. The Glen Lane, Glen Road, Lumber Drive neighborhood is a microcosm of that beautiful emotional bond. There are generations of the same family in this neighborhood. That speaks volumes about the quality of life in Kings Park and in their neighborhoods. And I feel that we and the board have an obligation to protect that quality of life in the town and in our neighborhoods. The, the facility that is being uh, proposed is being built as a rail and ash transfer yard. There are inherent dangers in the operation of these facilities, risks that we know exist, let alone the unexpected catastrophes. There is a clear and present danger in the form of ground pollution, air pollution, severe local traffic implications, both at the site itself, as well as towns, schools, and quality of life in the towns along the rail line. All of this has been well documented by Newsday and other news sources. Additionally, based on the scale of this proposal, the intention of the property owner is clear, and that is to operate this facility as a transfer yard for a myriad of products, goods, and materials coming in and out on a daily basis. This will quickly become a 24-7 operation, having a disastrous impact on our local communities, all of which are residential. There's no access to this property other than through, the neighbor, through our neighborhoods. Again, this is an issue here of inappropriateness for this particular site. We understand that we have homes that are next to the train tracks, but we bought our homes next to a, com a commuter railroad that passes our house in four seconds. No one's complaining about that. This is a whole different animal. This proposal implies dramatic health and quality of life risks that no one bargained for. This is not a not in my backyard issue or argument. This is a health and safety issue. This issue is, this issue is that it is not only in a, in an inappropriate location, but there are several other locations on Long Island that are much more appropriate and are positioned uh, there are much more appropriate locations that we're positioned that we are positioned to choose from. So your, your time is up. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Linda Henninger. Hi everyone. Um, Linda Henninger, Townline Real. As I'm sure you're aware by now, the Surface Transportation Board Office of Environmental Analysis proffered its final environmental assessment decision. It can be summed up this easily. They refused to even concede that a majority of the property is zoned residential. As both the town and the community pointed out, they simply changed industrially zoned to industrially used. Nothing was substantially addressed, leading any reasonable person to conclude they decided way before we ever commented where their decision was going to land. For over a year, community members have been writing letters, signing petitions, hiring experts, holding fundraisers to stop this regional freight yard. The town has seemed to do nothing more than double down. I meant to have all the petitions here for you today. I don't have them, but I'll drop them off. The town has supported this reckless project from the start, long before anyone knew about it thereby robbing the community of a voice, not only in front of this town board, but depriving us of our right to appeal the very dangerous decision to waive a full environmental impact study. The time to appeal that decision was 20 days after the decision was filed. The decision was filed September 29th, 2022. We didn't find out about this matter for months and months. The town, by not being transparent, took away our right to appeal. Maybe it shouldn't come as a shock that the Surface Transportation Board really couldn't care about the folks who live in this community. But I'm shocked that the supervisor and the town board don't seem to care when it comes to this destructive freight yard. Commenting on Governor um, Kathy Hochul's decision to indefinitely delay congestion pricing, Supervisor Wehrhein rightly stated, 
Governor Hochul has exhibited great leadership in listening to and delivering for the constituents of Long Island. You just said that recently, and it was right. We're asking the supervisor and this board to please display the same courage and commitment to your constituents. We're asking you to pull your support of this project and work hand in hand with the community to stop it. Thank you so much for your time. Alan Feigelson. Thank you. Okay. Alan Feigelson. <clears throat> Supervisor Wertheim, board members, my name is Alan Feigelson. My address is 32 Marshmallow Drive in Comac. I strongly oppose the building of the freight yard in our area. This regional private freight yard is a chain link fence away, as you've already heard, from established residential neighborhoods in Kings Park and in very close proximity to residential homes in Northport, East Northport, Fort Salonga, Green Lawn, and Comac, where I live. It will pass feet away from homes, schools, playgrounds, businesses, and residential roads, all along the Port Jeff line of the LIRR. It will bring more tra tractor trailers onto our local roads. Any claims of taking trucks off the road in our area is simply not true. Every ton to be shipped by rail will first arrive by truck, and each truck will then make a return trip after it deposits its cargo. That's 167 freight cars, I think someone mentioned before. How many trailer truck loads is that going to be? The freight cars will not come back empty to the yard on return trips. Goods such as lumber and automobiles are noted to be just some of the commodities the freight cars will be hauling back to the yard. The cargo will then be shipped to customers by Carlson Corp's fleet of diesel tractor trailers. Again, using our local roads. Right now, Town Line Road is inundated with truck traffic, and this certainly will only add to it. The real goal of this proposal is to create a regional private trucking facility and they're asking the town and federal government to help them do it in the guise of waste. Large private trucking operations should be sited along highways such as the LIE. Our children play <coughs> next to these roads. Our teenagers learn to drive on these roads. Your commitment should be first and foremost to protect the quality of lives the family and the families of the town of Smithtown, not to one private landowner. Please retract your support the Carlson Corp Freight Yard and take action to stop this project. Thank you. Thank you. George Houston. George Houston, Freight Yard. Your time frame for getting out of this mess you all put us in is getting shorter and shorter. The STB is just following a script they have been using for years. Their job is to increase rail services all over the country, that's it. They don't care about anything else like our sole source aquifer, pollution levels, residents, nothing. When you made a decision to show support for this proposal before you knew anything except what Carlson told you, it's mind boggling that you supported this without any plans going to planning except a picture of buildings and tracks. This was done intentionally so the STB can approve this project without giving you any information that you can make a decision on. You're all in a bad situation. When the STB says this is a go, the federal government controls everything. They will override any state, county, and local laws. Your Smithtown residents will be calling you complaining about noise, poor air quality, diesel fuel odors, truck traffic, and a multitude of other reasons, and they will learn that you gave this all up when you sent those letters with all your names on it. The only way out of this is not to change the zoning and don't approve the transload facility. It, this, that is, will make it un economically for Carlson to make money. This has nothing to do with removing ash and C&D. It has nothing to do with removing truck trailers from the LIE. So if that's what you all believe, it's all about the commodities that would be brought in. Increasing truck traffic through Huntington and Smithtown, increased health issues for your residents, and tremendous hit on our quality of life, and worries of train derailments and hazardous material incidents. So my question is why you would do this. In St. James, you turned down a proposal for an assisted living facility on the former Bull Run Farm. Your conclusion was this can have a significant impact on surrounding neighborhoods, especially when approved in zones that do not specifically permit them, especially residential ones. 
St. James's population is 13,733. The combined uh, population of Kings Park, Comac, and Fort Salonga is 62,396 people. That's almost 70% of the Smithtown population, but it's a good place to put a rail yard. It does not add up, and we are in serious need of some common sense. Judy Harris. Ju Judy Harris. Hi, Supervisor Werheim and board. My name is Judy Harris. I live at Three Bluff Road in Nisiquoke. And I've lived and owned a business in the town of Smithtown for 30 plus years. I've never been to one of your meetings, I apologize. I'm here today because we have a really bad problem along Long Beach Road, primarily in the summer because of the boat traffic and the beach traffic and the cars just go flying by, sometimes in excess of 60 miles an hour. I personally have literally been run off the road twice at night while walking my dog. A lot of the neighbors are all up in arms. They're throwing garbage out of the cars. We're picking up the garbage. It's crazy. So I'm not here to complain because if you don't have some sort of a solution, there's no point in complaining. So I have a suggestion. I don't know if it's feasible or not, but I wanted to bring it before the board. The Knox School is a school. Can't that be in some way zoned as a school zone where we have a traffic, a speed limit that the police can enforce? That'll bring revenue into the village and the town and it'll solve a lot of these problems. It's just a suggestion and I was hoping that perhaps you guys might listen and take a look at this, but it's something we really do need to fix. We've got little children. The, the houses are far apart. We don't have tons of children as they do with this freight yard, but we do have significant problems with the speeders and the police have been phenomenal, but they can't be there 24 seven. So there are people playing chicken, racing down the roads. There are students that have cars at the Knox School that come flying down, they don't look. Maybe we can do something about it by designating it a school zone and putting up a school speed limit. Just a thought. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. You. Long Beach Road, as you know, is uh, in the incorporated village of Nessaquag. I do understand. So that. we will, um, our director of public safety is here. We will have some words with them, but I would suggest you make that suggestion to that board as well. Oh, I will. Thank okay. you so much. If I may, I met with the chief yesterday and two of your other residents specific to the speeding on Long Beach Road and Mauritius Road. So there's a couple of things that the chief is going to deploy. So. Terrific. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sherry Lynn Kaplan. Good afternoon. My name is Sherry Lynn Kaplan. And I'm here today as a concerned, frustrated, and confused resident of Smithtown. I'd like to talk about the, the rail yard. I'm here with questions, none of which I expect answers to today, but which I hope will cause the board to take a step back and revisit what has happened so far, and perhaps alter things going forward. How does something major happen that affects residents without timely notice to the general public? I never received any notice from anyone, not from the applicant, not from the town, about the proposal regarding the railroad terminal and then the request for an exemption of a full environmental study. My only source of information was word of mouth and reading an article in Smithtown News. How was a project given town approval before an application was even submitted? From the way this was handled, it looks as if a cloak of secrecy was used by the town and the applicant so that the residents remained uninformed. There was also the issuance of Supervisor Wareheim's letter on October 28, 2022, writing on behalf of the town board, noting its approval of the terminal and requesting an exemption of a full environmental impact study. Now, as I understand it, the normal procedure for an applicant is to file your application with the town, and then subsequently, once you get that, asking for approval 
and requesting the exemption of a full environmental impact study. But I don't believe that was funk, that that policy was followed here. Why was Carlson allowed to file both simultaneously, especially when that procedure would negatively impact on a resident's ability to be heard? By allowing the process to be handled that way, the town ensured that interested people had no knowledge of whatsoever of what was being proposed, and they weren't afforded an opportunity to voice their opinions and views. It's my understanding that there's a small window of time allotted for public comment once an application is made. But if the public receives no prior notice of an applicant's intention from the town, then the resident has no real or meaningful opportunity to have a voice heard and comment on what is going on. Seemingly, this is a violation of basic and fundamental due process. I don't understand why the town has continued to barrel forward with this project without any regard to valid community concerns, and then, when an advisory opinion in March of, 20, of this year was issued, was that even considered about how the board acted without an application? Were any steps taken in consideration of that advisory opinion? And did it affect the application in any way? This gives the appearance of working behind closed doors, and that's not the way a government should work with its residents. Thank you. Thank you. Lorraine Lipton. Good afternoon to the uh, to Supervisor Wertheim and the town board me uh, members. And good afternoon to everybody who had a great speech regarding whether it's town line or not, whether it's the freight yard or not, everybody was very, very, very good. Um, my name is Lorraine Lipton, and uh, my address is 34 Delmar Lane, and I've been a resident, I'm a little nervous, I've been a resident of Comac for 24 years. Um, it's been my home, my children's home, and hopefully grandchildren as well. I'm here today to express my very strong opposition to the proposed freight yard project in our community. I'm here because this project is not in compliance with our present zoning regulations and poses a significant threat to our community. This project is not in compliance with the present zoning regulations and to our children. Placing a freight yard in such close proximity to where families reside raises serious concerns about health risks, noise pro pollution, increased traffic congestion and potential, I'm sorry, potential safety hazards. Our families and the future of our children are at stake. They are continued studies that they, they have continued studies that show that breathing problems begin early on in little children's lives. With these items that are being overlooked, we are overlooking our children. Our neighborhoods have to be spaces where our families feel safe and secure, and the introduction of a freight yard directly conflicts with that ideal. I urge the town board to reconsider this project and to prioritize the preservation of our residential areas and the health and well-being of our children. Consider your children, consider what it would be like for them. I really appreciate the fact that you've listened to me, and may you all have a good day. Thank you. Anton Angelic. Thank you for this opportunity to hear the voices of this community. My name is Anton Angelic. I'm a senior citizen. I live in Fort Salonga and am involved with the Fort Salonga Association as being part of the board. We have seen how much our veterans have been celebrated, especially during this uh, Memorial Day weekend with the 80th anniversary of D-Day. It's a very, very memorable time for veterans. It is no secret that our national rail system has safety risks and needs improvement. Hauling toxic waste through our community 
provides risks. Sometimes we have to look beyond our own purview. The Northport Veterans Hospital, which is one of the largest in the East Coast, and is, we, the Fort Salon Association supports with community service, is less than one mile from the site. If there is a toxic spill, it is possible that the veterans could be harmed. If this occurs, their harm will be added to, to their lives. Will this board tell the veterans if such occurrence occurs? Thank you for your service. Our prayers and thoughts are with you. Vote your conscience. Diane Calderon. Supervisor Werheim, town board members, good afternoon. My name is Diane Calderon. I reside at 269 Bread and Cheese, Hollow Road, Fort Salonga. I strongly oppose the building of a freight yard in our area. The property in question is right next to residential homes, which you've heard multiple times today, close to schools and playgrounds. There will be a lot of noise and light pollution produced from the site, mostly at night. The site will be handling ash, which is hazardous. It sits atop of an aquifer that provides drinking water for Long Island. Any leak of hazardous materials will be a disaster for Long Island, and it can happen. We already have traffic issues in the area. Why would you allow this to make this worse and further damage our roads? We already have significant noise from trucks in the area, and to add freight noise will make it substantially worse. We moved here to this area 17 years ago. My husband's from Huntington. I was living in the city at the time. I grew up on the South Shore. We moved here because it's a small town feel and quaint surroundings, a great place for us to settle up and have children and make a family. We have two children now. One is a freshman in Kings Park High School, and the other is in sixth grade in the middle school. Um, having this freight yard will really ruin it for my family, my children, and so many others in this room and beyond this room. There are, so, there are other alternate sites on Long Island that are much further from densely populated areas and are more suitable. I know I'm one of the, maybe you're hearing this for the 15th time today, but I know you know this and I feel we just have to keep reiterating this until you retract your support for the Carlson Corp freight yard and take action to stop this project. Um, I took the time today to come here. I'm missing several important meetings at work that I need to get back to after this. My children are texting me, they're coming home from school. One can't get into the house because the other one is upstairs not answering the door. So I took time to come here out of the badness, right? Hopefully you are hearing myself, others in this room. This is very important to us that we are making the time to be here, um, to be heard. And I thank you. I thank you for your time today. Thank, thank you. you. Millie Marchese. Hello, my name is Millie Marchese. I live at 36 Brewster Avenue in Northport. I strongly oppose the building of the freight yard in our neighborhood. Dr. John Bedick a senior operations and management consultant and research fellow at the Center of Advanced Infrastructure and Transportation at Rutgers University states that CND is more likely to cause train derailments during transportation than any other types of material. This is because CND consists of bulky chunks of heavy debris that can easily shift during rail transport, thus making it more likely to cause equipment failure and derailment. Having these freight cars on the one track Port Jefferson line is irresponsible. Any derailment, no matter how small, would adversely impact the LIRR commuters on the Port Jefferson line. Please retract your support for the Carlson Corp freight yard and take action to stop this project. Thank you. Thank you. Marjorie Adoviano. Can 
Good afternoon. My name is Marjorie Ottaviano, 24 Glen Lane, Kings Park. I strongly oppose the building of a freight yard in our area. This will be a significant detriment to our community and will undoubtedly ruin many families' quality of life. There will be lasting impacts, including noise, congestion, and a reduction in our property values. There will also be serious health risks associated with this project. This includes air pollution from the diesel freight trains and the ash and the debris being transported on these trains. Our houses are located so close to the proposed train yard and our living conditions will quickly deteriorate if this gets built. As my husband stated last month, we are 150 feet from the train yard. I mean, from the, from the train track. I have um, lived in this area for 32 years. My children have, <laughs> have grown up with the Simeon family, with everybody here. My children have been grown up, has, have grown up with them. We want our grandchildren to come here. They won't come here if that freight yard is built. There are many families with small children and, and there's always children playing on our block. Everybody walks around our block. This is unacceptable. We do not want our children growing up around this freight yard. There are our children who grew up in this neighborhood. They are buying our houses in our neighborhood. Like Joe said, they are staying in our neighborhood. But they're all going to leave if this happens. This location is incredibly inappropriate for this project because it directly impacts our residential neighborhoods and we should not be subject to such heavy industrial activities. Please retract your support of the Carlson Corp freight yard and take action to stop this project. Thank you for your time. Erica Lane Ferrari. Excuse me. I am listening. You should be paying attention. I'm taking notes we on take the notes speakers. To the speakers. You should pay attention to what we're doing up here because we're paying attention to you. Over. We're paying yeah. attention to you, folks. I'm you taking notes on the speaker's comments. Right, my apologies. <laughs> Accept it. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here because I want to dis discuss how we can make Callahan's Beach camping safer for our families. Um, I am a born and raised Kings Parker. I have been living in Kings Park for the last, I'll be 29 in August, so for the last 29 years. And my family has been camping at Callahan's every Memorial Day weekend, every Labor Day weekend for the last 25 years. I want to say 24 years because it's been closed for the last three years. As you guys know that it is now reopened. I was there on Memorial Day weekend and the last night that I was there, there were quite a few altercations at um, 10 o'clock at night and again at 2.30 at night where I was the only fam, my family and I were the only family there. We had two children under the age of five and we were woken up at 2.30 at night to headlights circling the campsite where if you are a town resident, which you have to p purchase a permit in order to camp in at Callahan's. So, and you have to be a resident in order to purchase that permit. You can't even show your license and be on the island anymore to like go and float on your back. If you live in Glen Cove, you can't do that. You now have to pay $12 for a parking pass, which is completely understandable. So my entire family abided by the rules. We did everything and People, I don't know if they were town members, whoever, came into the park at 10 o'clock at night on Sunday, and my husband and his friend had to tell them to leave. Like, the park is closed. I'm not sure why the gates weren't closed. I don't know where the town ranger was. I know there's supposed to be a gentleman sleeping in the booth down there. I don't know if he was there. There was nobody there, but my husband and his friend were able to get 
this group of people to leave. And we didn't feel too uncomfortable because there was a lot of people and it was a mixed crowd. Like it wasn't all males and it wasn't all females. It was like, you know, kids wanted to just hang out. Anyway, we got them to leave. 2.30 at night when we're all sleeping in the tents and the kids are passed out, a, another car, I don't know, I have three license plates. If you would like the license plates afterwards, I can give them to you, came and was circling our campsite at 2.30 at night. My husband was able to get them to leave the campsite. After about five, 10 minutes, he proceeded to decide to get in his car to make sure that they now left Callahan's, which they had not. They were lingering within the entrance of Callahan's at the open gate, and my husband pretty much had to chase them with his car into a Fort Salonga neighborhood. And at that point, I had called public safety, and it took public safety nearly two hours two hours to get to my family. As we are all aware, MS-13 dumped a body over there a few years ago. Can maybe thumbs up. What I would ask you to do is two things. Um, you have those plate numbers? Yes. Uh, do you have them with you? I don't. I can have my husband send them. Okay. What I would ask you to do is I will be in the office tomorrow morning. If you can call my office. Yeah. So I can have a conversation with you on the phone. Absolutely. Get all the information. Yes. And certainly we will go to work on exactly what happened there. I have thought of a solution, so I'd be happy to give it to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, that's you might have here, a call but... tomorrow or be in all day. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Natalie Metzger. Hi, my name is Natalia Metzger. I live in 12 Candy Lane in Comac. Um, I'm coming here as a concerned community member regarding the freight yard. Um, this is my daughter, Serena Metzger. She is my youngest of three daughters. Um, we live there, and Serena has asthma, severe asthma. So when we're talking about air quality from the freight yard, it's a concern, and not just a minor concern. When you're watching a small child use a nebulizer for an hour on and off again with albuterol because of air quality, it's a genuine concern. And if you don't consider that and you just want to consider the financials of it, I'm also a realtor. And with new property, con con with new property condition disclosures that are coming out on August 31st, every home buyer, every home seller has to, con has to disclose the condition of their home. Proximity to these type of environments will be a factor for future home sales. So even if you can get over the image of a small child using a nebulizer because of air quality, at the very least, and if you're only concerned about the financials of it, I would also think about all the future transactions that are going to be happening here in this community. And if you can get over the anecdotal part, that's a personal anecdote, and then in addition to the real estate perspective, I'm a troop leader of Troop 350. Our girls, ages seven through eight, wrote letters. And each of them, I want to just read one of them because they are in hopes that they, they want you to see them. And they said, and I will be giving it over to you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, one of them wrote, and we didn't tell them what to write. They wrote these and wrote their emotions and drew their emotions on there, each of them. I have 13 of them. But I thought the best one that was written by a little girl named Emily. You have one minute, then. Absolutely. Said, I don't want you to make a freight yard. It makes me sad and mad. And how would you feel if someone was destroying your neighborhood? And I live here, so please don't do a freight yard. That is an age eight girl. So I ask you to reconsider. These little girls think they can make a difference. And if you could just consider this when you make these type of decisions. Thank you so much for our time. Thank you. Okay. Um, no other speakers? No. Yeah, we'll move to close. I need a second. Second. Supervisor Wehheim? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Thank you.